Welcome back everyone for today's video we are going to be taking a look at the seventh round of the 1000 GM six day summer invitational being held in New York City now round number seven we have James Wynn Lay versus Levy Rosman Levy is on five points out of six a very tough draw in round six but he is now playing the lowest ranked player in the tournament in round number seven so let's jump right into the action so the game starts with e4. Levy plays his classic Karo Khan. I realize I should flip the board. And now we get d4, d5. Now here, Win plays the move pawn takes pawn, which is known as the exchange variation of the Karo Khan. And after takes, bishop d3, knight c6, and c3, Levy plays the move e6. Now, one fun fact, the only time that I ever lost to Levy in a blitz game on chess.com, it actually was in this exchange variation of the Karo Khan. And in that game, Levy played the move queen c7, to stop me from putting my bishop on the f4 square so in this game levy decides instead to play the move e6 and now we have the move knight f3 levy goes bishop to d6 i do think that in this position bishop f4 is slightly preferable if i had to pick a line but the show goes on so we get knight f3 bishop d6 castles now levy puts the knight on e7 and you'll notice already the white bishop on or the white lights white dark square bishop on c1 does not have a home on f4 and therefore this bishop on d6 is already very very well placed so game continues with rook to e1 we get queen c7 queen to e2 and now we have the move castles and here knight a3 is played relatively quickly by win levy plays a6 a logical move to stop knight b5 he might have been able to actually take the knight but one of the reasons he didn't go for it is that even though white gets these double pawns on a2 and a3 the two b's here are super active on the diagonals so after knight to a3 we get to move a6 and now we have the move knight c2 and here levy plays the move f6 now one thing that i've noticed in some of these games including the seventh round game that levy is playing that it feels to me like some of his opponents they come in with a very basic very rudimentary opening knowledge where they have certain lines memorized but they haven't looked in depth at a lot of the different variations and i'm not gonna be too critical because obviously they're at a much lower level but in some ways it reminds me of my youth growing up where actually when i went into games as like a 22 or 2300 player i also didn't have a lot of knowledge now the reason i mention this is very specifically that in this modern day and age where there's so many more resources out there and available for everyone to study it is a little bit surprising to me that they don't seem super well prepared so after f6 levy's opponent decides to play the move c4 and it's very clear to me that all these moves are sort of about freaking out or panicking in the position what levy's opponent is very worried about here is that let's just say he goes bishop to d2 levy can play the move e5 intending to build a big black center with the pawns on d5 and e5 or d5 and e4 so levy's already i think starting to take over a little bit and his opponent decides here to play the move c4 a little bit of panic i would say because after takes takes and knight d5 position remains somewhat balanced but i would say already it's a lot easier for black to play now the reason that i think it's a lot easier for black to play is that first of all you have the isolated pawn on d4 which is blockaded by the knight so if you ever were to trade the bishop for the knight here for example black gets the bishop pair and suddenly the two bishops become very active whether you put the bishop on g4 f5 combined with the bishop on this long dark square diagonal black is doing very well so after knight d5 we get this move knight to e3 from win and this is already what i would say is a somewhat serious mistake for the computer it's not that bad but i think in human practice already levy is doing very well so he plays the move knight to f4 putting the knife on this f4 square and attacking the queen at the same time and now we get the move queen to d1 after queen to d1 levy plays the move b5 attacking this bishop and trying to develop his bishop but also stop white from harassing this pawn on e6 with the light square b so in this position win plays move bishop b3 i think bishop f1 is probably very slightly better but probably already here he's worried about moves like bishop b4 maybe even rook to d8 with pressure on the d4 pawn and in general it's it's just kind of hard to figure out what to do so win plays bishop b3 and now levy plays move knight a5 which is an excellent move here because again you attack this bishop on b3 and white still has this problem with the isolated pawn on d4 so here when plays move knight f5 and this is really what i would say is the start of kind of going in the wrong direction a little bit it's not a terrible move but if you're gonna play this knight f5 move you will have to be extremely precise so levy plays the move bishop b4 and now we get this move rook to e4 an excellent move played by levy's opponent really the only move in the position if you were to play the move bishop to d2 here after bishop takes bishop you cannot take with the queen because then i trade the knight for the bishop you lose your horse and you lose the game along with it so 
If you were to play bishop d2, takes knight d2, for example, now after knight b3, you take with the queen to pin the pawn on e6. But now after bishop b7, there's a lot of pressure towards the pawn on g2. If you play g3, there's bishop d5, breaking the pin up and winning the game on the spot. So we get to move rook to e4. When rook to e4, Levy trades knight for the bishop, queen takes knight, we get to move knight d5, and now Win plays move knight e3 back, trying to remove this knight from the d5 square. Now here, Levy plays move queen f7, which maybe is not the absolute best line according to the computer. I think in this position, it wanted the move. I thought bishop b7 initially, and after rook takes e6, rook fd8, I thought it was better for black. Maybe it's not quite so simple, or at least computer doesn't give as big of an advantage as I initially thought. But after rook to e4 and a move like king h8, black has these two b's there's a lot of pressure towards the pawn on d4 and computer gives black an advantage do i fault levy for finding this no because already at this point in the game one thing that i can tell you guys at this stage is very clear that white is struggling white is a player who's significantly lower rated he's only 2200 lowest rated player in the tournament i believe i could be wrong on that but pretty sure um and it feels very much like he's trying to do what we call which is he's trying to hold on and simply be solid and make a drop so after queen f7 the knights come off rook e3 is played and now levy goes bishop to d6 intending to play bishop g4 and trying to create a bunch of threats on the king side levy's opponent goes bishop d2 and now we get this move b4 and this move is an excellent move from levy because without this move levy would not be better in fact i would i would sort of um guess that without b4 white could even end up better for example say you go bishop g4 after bishop b4 is played here you have to trade off a pair of bishops now you no longer have the two b's on the board it's just a lone bishop versus a knight and already here with only two open files on the e and c files this game is really trending in the direction of draw also because there's very limited material on the board so levy goes b4 and now shocking everyone when decides to take this pawn now to me this is a very clear sign of where white is a lower rated player he's feeling very nervous about the situation he's already burning a lot of time and he's sort of simply hoping that he can draw the game now it's been a very long time since i was at this level but i do remember when i was much younger like 10 11 years old between like 22 2300 level when i play people who are like 2400 2500 im or gm there are many cases where i would try to just not blunder try to save the game try to do anything except blunder and just make a draw but sometimes when you try to be solid or you try to just play moves and and just not do anything too much things can go wrong much more easily so when Wynn takes this pawn, the game is definitely going in the wrong direction. What White should have played was this move a3 here. And after pawn takes, pawn takes. If Black goes bishop f5, again, you have bishop b4 to trade the b's. And if Black plays a5, stopping bishop b4, now you can play a move like queen b6, hitting the bishop on d6. You can probably try to stack the rooks on the c file. And Black is maybe very marginally better, but it's nothing to write home about however after bishop takes b4 is played now levy is completely in the driver's seat with zero risk and he's the only one who has chances to win the game because he plays the move rook b8 win takes the bishop if win were to play a3 here there's a5 you get a very similar variation where white has to sack the queen which is still better for black so we get bishop takes bishop rook takes queen rook takes and now we have the move rook e8 now one thing you'll notice that for the computer black is only very slightly better because even though white is sacked the queen white has a rook a pawn and a bishop in return for the queen which is the equivalent of nine nine equals nine so after rook e8 in this position we get this move rook c1 being played here and now levy plays the move bishop f5 now one of the reasons that levy maintains good chance to win this game here is the opposite color bishops in many situations where one side has like a queen for a rook and a bishop or a rook and a knight if you have opposite color bishops it's you cannot force an exchange of the bishops so this bishop should always be a very strong piece for black so we get h3 creating the look for the king on h2 and now levy plays h5 we get to move rook b6 i am kind of curious why levy's opponent did not play the move rook to c7 creating the classic kebab here because after queen g6 and knight to h4 for example let's just say queen h7 and rook g3 white has a lot of counterplay with the two towers the knight pressures the bishop and honestly at this point in the game white is simply not worse so if white had found rook c7 if win had played this move there's a very good chance that levy would not have won this game spoiler alert so instead we get rook to b6 now levy goes queen a7 and we get to move rook c c6 here levy plays bishop to d3 protecting the pawn on a6 but also setting up a very nasty threat with bishop to b5 attacking both of the rooks at the same time you move a rook you lose that one you take well now you have a bishop and knight for a queen and black will win anyway 
So we get the move bishop g3. Levy plays king h7, and now we get this move king h2. Now, one reason I could tell very clearly when I was watching this game, even though I wasn't broadcasting, that Levy's opponent was very nervous with the whole situation is because one thing his opponent is doing here is he's trying to argue if he sets up the pieces like the bishop and the knight here and he doesn't move anything, like he just moves the rook back and forth, that black cannot do anything to create an advantage. And this is a clear sign of an opponent who's very nervous because he's trying to just sit on the position and be very passive without trying to fight. And when you do that, as I said before, most often times you, things tend to go very badly wrong so after king h7 we get king h2 levy plays rook e7 we get the move bishop d6 again the computer is screaming for a4 and the reason is actually quite simple if you can get this pawn to a5 now you'll notice that these pawns on the queen side get fixed let's just say rook e7 b4 pawns are getting fixed on the opposite color of this light square b so white not white sorry black really cannot remove this rook from b6 easily and black simply is not better whatsoever Instead, we get the move bishop d6, Levy goes rook e2, we get bishop g3, and now Levy plays the move bishop d5. Here we get rook to d6, and Levy goes rook to e7, and now Win once again rejects this move a4, and instead plays b3. Now, as I said before, one other critical point about this is you can tell from the position that White is simply letting the clock bleed. He's getting lower and lower on the time without really creating any or without having any clear-cut plan and whenever you try to sit on a position like this at any level it's really not a good sign because most of the time you're simply sitting you don't know what you're doing and if it ever gets complicated you're going to end up in a lot of trouble all right so after rook to e7 is played we now get this move b3 a4 here probably would have been enough to save the game because if bishop takes a4 is played you go rook takes a6 and you win the bishop on a4 if black goes bishop d3 once again you can play a5 reinforcing this rook on b6 and pressuring the pawns on d5 and a6 at the same time instead we got b3 and now levy correctly plays the move rook b7 trading off one of the sets of rooks now in this position white has two rooks versus a queen and a rook and generally the more rooks on the board the less effective a queen can be so when levy plays rook to b7 here now a set of rooks are coming off the board the rook on d6 is very passive here it, i guess it attacks the pawn on on d5 temporarily but it's not really going anywhere super special in a hurry and the queen is going to start to zip all over the board and cause a ton of problems so here we get the move rook d8 another mistake by the way white should have played h4 to stop any kingside expansion down the road but alas he plays rook d8 now this is where i talk about like his opponent's trying desperately to hang on he's very clearly nervous because he's never making committal decisions he's trying to sit move the rook back and forth not push upon until he absolutely has to not do anything on the king side and when you try to play like this it's simply going to be very bad so we get rook d8 bishop d3 is played by levy intending to go for bishop b1 to win the pawn on a2 and now we have the move rook b8 levy goes queen to a7 we get the move rook c8 and levy plays bishop to e4 creating the classic wooden shield here where the bishop guards the pawn but it attacks the knight which guards the central pawn at the same time we get the move rook to c5 and now levy plays the move queen to b7 now here the great one of the best things about this position for levy is this two result game he is a queen for a rook bishop and pawn here he cannot lose this game but also his opponent is simply too low on time now as i stressed earlier in one of the one of the previous videos for levy if he is very serious about trying to get the gm norms and or the title it's very abundantly clear to me that in so much as he can he should play tournaments which only have one time control where you get 90 minutes to start and you do not get any more time at move 40 because when they get low when the players get low on time one of levy's biggest advantages is the ability to play blitz to play moves quickly and simply be better than his opponents now keep in mind in this sort of position if it were a very strong player playing with the white pieces there's a good chance they could still defend this but a 2200 simply does not possess the capability to play 10 15 20 best moves in a row in such a position so we get the move 92 levy goes bishop d3 we get rook c3 bishop f5 apparently bishop g6 is better by the way but he goes to f5 we have bishop d6 played here and this is a move that loses the game if white had played rook to c5 here it would have been quite interesting interesting to see what would have happened after a move like bishop e6 white can play a3 here and suddenly it's very hard for black to enter because the b4 square is covered the rook covers a5 pawn supports the rook so like even if you get here there's no real entry into the center of the board here for black so queen is still being held at bay 
but as i said before he's playing someone much lower rated someone who's been very nervous it's very clear throughout the day someone trying to sit on position not make committal decisions anywhere and really just someone who doesn't have a plan in the position and finally the glue sort of breaks or everything kind of collapses with this move bishop d6 because now levy can play queen b6 attacking the pawn and the bishop creating the classic right triangle we have bishop c5 queen c7 check king king to g1 and now levy goes queen a5 hitting the rook and the pawn at the same time and at this point the game is effectively over white could resign here but we'll see how it continues so we get b4 levy plays queen a2 we get rook to f3 bishop g6 and now the move knight b3 is played by win levy goes bishop c2 we get knight to a5 and now we have this move bishop e4 really not a lot of explanation needed here other than the fact that levy has now forced this knight way off to the queen side where it's nowhere near this king so it's not a defensive piece anymore and at this point it's just over we get rook to b3 levy goes queen d2 rook to e3 and now he plays this move h4 now this move maybe it's not the top computer move but it's a move that simply fixes the pawn on h3 here and now there are always going to be problems with your pawns on g2 and h3 here win plays move knight b3 and now levy plays move queen d1 we get king h2 and we have this move queen to f1 threatening to checkmate the white king on g2 win plays f3 and now levy goes queen to f2 attacking the rook on e3 and the game concludes after this move rook c3 we get the move queen g3 white doesn't have anything better if you were to take here for example after take six there's still queen g3 check picking up the horse on the other side of the board and after rook c3 is played we get queen g3 king g1 and after queen to e1 levy wins the game as his opponent resigns in this position in view of the fact that he's going to lose this rook on c3 so a pretty tame game honestly I don't have a whole lot to say about this I mean Levy did find some good moves it's not a game that I really think was uh was one of his best games in the tournament per se to me when I look at this game it just feels like he's playing against someone who's 2200 someone who's completely outclassed he was definitely nervous way too timid trying to just play moves and never really had a plan in the game and it's someone who I think in the future maybe will put up a better fight but in this case Levy was simply a much better player and it felt like he almost could have done anything to win the game so it's not to like downplay Levy winning the game because of course it's a great win or say diminish his opponent and say he's a bad player but it's just very clear that this player who he played against today was simply outclassed on all fronts so for Levy it's a good win he moves to six points out of seven with the victory he gains a few more rating points with this win and he continues to play generally what I would say is very solid chess he is doing what he needs to do to win most of these games and it's very very good to see so on that note I hope you guys have enjoyed this recap from the seventh round of the 1000 GM summer six day summer invitational tournament being held in New York City if you are not already subscribed to my channel make sure that you smash that subscribe button below and we will be back tomorrow with some recaps of the final two games of this event when Levy plays his eighth and ninth round tomorrow on Sunday so I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you tomorrow have a great rest of your evening see you guys bye